I've known you for a while, but he's always, since I've known him, he's always been a really good fighter, always just been making moves in the amateurs. Here's Mark Castro. Uh, thank you, Lukey, for having me. Thank you for always being such a great person and great uh, reporter, and just appreciate you covering amateur boxing since they don't always get the courage it needs. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a lab- it literally is a labor of love because, like, literally it's just you guys that follow it, but... There's great fighters like you, Gabe Flores, Keyshawn Davis, Shakur, and you can see you're basically your whole career, you know, and it's neat to see that. Uh, what have you been up to, you know, because as someone that follows amateur boxing or maybe some of my listeners that don't, uh, just update people on stuff that's going on with you. Um, so I'm, always, I'm a boxer. I'm an athlete. Just always in the gym, training constantly. It's what I love to do. Um, I'm in school, enrolled as Fresno State as well. But I recently got sponsored by um, Gymshark, the apparel brand from um, London, England. And I'm a part of the team. I'm a part of a roster. Of, now it's um, four, four boxers. There's, the, 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 there's three other boxers. Uh, Katie Taylor, the undisputed at 130. Um, Ryan Garcia uh, and Sean Garcia, their brothers. Oh. Now, you've known Ryan for, like, ever, basically, right? You guys were in the amateurs, but I remember when he fought Velez, you were in the locker room and stuff. So that's pretty cool that you guys are on the same team and stuff. Yes, um, it's great. Uh, I've been knowing Ryan, like, before everything, before he uh, started blowing up on social media. And him and his family are truly – they're great friends of ours, and they're just – they're great people as well, and it's just um, I'm happy for Ryan. I'm happy for his family. I'm, I'm extremely happy for him to get the new contract. And it's just we're we're boys. We go way back, and it's uh, there's not that many people to say that we have friends in this sport. And like I can say he's one of my friends in this sport. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty cutthroat business, man. Um, how does it feel? You've you've pretty much put like five, six, seven, eight years into basically next year. So what does it feel? to finally, like, you're basically, you're turning into an adult, but you also get to show off your talents that you've been working so hard to make that Olympic team coming up. Uh, I'm excited because the last time I competed in a, uh, a men's national tournament, I was 18. I just had turned 18. So now I'm 20. I got my full man strength. I got, I'm excited to see what I could do and excited to show people what I could do and, like, prove a lot of people wrong and just, just – this um, greatness is consistency over time. So I'm just trying to be consistent and just show them that I can still compete at this level and actually do it to I can make it to the Olympics. And we also got to touch on something because whenever I've always brought you up, I've always shown love to you and everyone that knows me knows that. And I got, I'm, we're not saying no names, but sometimes I go out there in the streets and people will say, well, his style, I don't like his style, or it won't transfer the pros. What do you say when you, when you hear, obviously all boxers hear it, but you have a unique way of fighting, and people say kind of negative things, which I'm sure you've heard. What do you say, or how do you react to prove them wrong? Um, honestly, so um, people are always going to talk, whether you're doing great, uh, whether you're not doing um, great. So they're always going to have something to say. But at the end of the day, all I got to say is um, – I'm winning, and it has come this far, but I have gotten to a point in my career where I understand that I had needed to change my style or change up a couple of techniques, and we've been working on that. We've been, we've been in the gym, and um, honestly, I feel like the next time people see me, see me fight, I'm going to be a different fighter, but uh, with the same abilities, with different techniques as well, and I'm a, the ability to adjust is just is going to get better, and I just feel like... Um, I have a, I have, I have a great coach. My dad's going to be showing me my dad, me and my dad already talked about this, that we need to change up the style a little bit and we're not afraid. And the thing is that I'm young, I'm still in amateurs and I haven't went to the pros yet. So I haven't taken the punishment I have without headgear yet. And so, that, that's a very humble stance from you as well to say something like this. Yes. I understand that I don't have the prettiest style. It has gotten me this far, but we un- I understand that things had to change and things are things have changed, but it's just I haven't got the opportunity to present it to the the public, the the boxing fans. And I next time you see me, I'm gonna be a totally different fighter, but the same killer instinct. 
I mean, that's a scary thought because you've always been a good fighter. So you're basically saying you're just improving on a winning formula. Yes. Um, and that's, that's honestly like a lot of fighters don't see it that way. They see themselves if it's, they always say, oh, if it's broke, don't, it's not broken, don't fix it. But I understand that this is a sport where I'm trying to develop over years, over time. I'm not just trying to just win these fights right now. I'm trying to develop a style an exciting style that sells fights that puts people in seats and just and that those people in seats develop too money in your pocket so i need to develop and i also need to take care of myself because there's life after boxing and i just need to take less punishment and i understand that i had needed to work on defense and i'm not afraid to admit it and i i'm not afraid to admit as well i've been in the gym working on that as well yeah well i mean that to me that's just that speaks to your winning ways when you just say things that I think a lot of boxers would kind of run from and, and not say publicly. Yes. But um, I'm not afraid to, um, I'm not afraid to bring that up because if I bring it up, it, it's, it's, if I bring it up, it's kind of like, Oh, he touched on the subject. We didn't think he was going to touch on. Like, it just kind of like shows maturity and I'm fine with it. I'm just excited to show people my, st- my, my, my new improved fighting style and techniques with the St. Killer Instinct. And uh, you're going to be showing off your new skills in Oxnard in November. If they bring 20, 20 or $30 down to wherever it is, they can probably see it. I honestly think it's free up into the finals. But they're going to want to go to the finals, so they might as well yeah. go and see it and then, then bring like 20 or so dollars, maybe – maybe two twenties yeah. get lunch and that. Yeah. But, uh, that's where you're going to be showing off the skills. Yes. I'll be in Oxnard, uh, November 3rd through the 9th. It's a week tournament called the Olympic trial qualifiers. And I'll definitely be up there. And another thing I want to touch on is like, there's some guys in your division. Um, I believe you're still in the division with Duke Reagan and some of these other people. What do you, how do you view? I know you're, very um, humble and all that, but how do you view the talent pool in your division, the guys that have qualified already looking to Lake Charles? Uh, honestly, it's a stacked division, and a lot of people said it's up for grabs. And we have Duke Reagan, a silver medalist. He's been on USC State team for a while now. Uh, he was at the last Olympic trials. Um, he's a really talented boxer, and he has quite the accomplished resume. And honestly, He's uh, he's really talented, and he's there. This this these um this bracket has to be. I'm, I want the bracket to be filled with talent, because I don't want them to say that oh he won the bracket because it's easy. I'm excited to be fighting the best, whether it's Duke and then Kevin Montana. Kevin Montana is a quite accomplished as well, um, Golden Glove boxer, um, and then the other boxers. I think uh, David Navarro. These are accomplished boxers and just. I'm excited to fight against the best and um, to prove that I am also the best because I'm working hard. I'm training hard. I'm ready to improve because it's, I'm, a, I'm really competitive, so I know they're going to be training hard, and I'm going to be training hard. I just want them to be, I just want them to be, um, be the best possible so I could just – I just could say that I was the best. I'm going to – and whoever, whoever wins this division is the best. And that's all I have to say because coming uh, coming December, there's no, there shouldn't be no, there shouldn't be answers for butts because it's a double elimination tournament. So you have to lose twice that week. Yeah, so it's it's basically it should weed out who's the best. My only fear is someone that's pr- more than likely going to this tournament is I'm really hoping there's not a storm warning because we're going to the middle of the south and I'm just hoping there's no weather delays or anything. But that's just a selfish thing. Yeah, I think um, USA Boxing is probably going to handle that situation really good if that if that if that were to occur. Um, I'm just ex- I'm just excited for the Olympic trials because this is I'm I'm honestly just uh, I always tell people this I'm just a kid living my dream. I'm boxing. I'm actually I have a chance to represent Team USA and I'm going to fulfill that dream uh, coming December. Well, I'm super excited for you because I know how much you've wanted to be an uh, Olympian and how much you've worked for this. And it just sound, I hear the excitement in your voice about um, competing against the very best. 
Yes. Um, I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm just – it's just an excitement, like an excitement where you want to work out and you don't hardly – you get – you make a workout, and then sometimes my dad has to stop me because he doesn't want me to overtrain as well. So it's just my mind's always going. My mind's always thinking boxing, uh, watching watching film, doing this, doing that, and I just shot a boxing wherever in a public place. I'm excited. It's just – Yeah. It's excited, yeah. That is, that is tremendous. Um, any other news or happenings that we should we should touch on before we get you up out of here? Um, um, honestly, uh, I think one more thing, uh, I might be, um, getting a new, not a new trainer, but getting as as long as a trainer, as long as my dad, my dad's always going to be in my corner and I was going to be my trainer and my, my mentor. And like, um, I might, uh, be training with, uh, Eddie Reynoso, Canelo's trainer alongside Ryan and Canelo. Okay. So that's a power move. You might be making a power move. Yes. Uh, and also, it's uh, it's gonna work out for me and him because, honestly, he uh, he wants the opportunity to work with a, a, a Olympic boxer, a, a boxer that might gonna go to the Olympics to represent Team USA, and it helps me as well because he's a really established coach in the sport and a professional coach, and I love the what he has done with Ryan. I love what he has done with Canelo since the Mayweather fight. And Oscar Valdez, like the forgotten, the forgotten guy. But Oscar's looked pretty darn good with him too. Yeah. Um, so when when are you going down to wherever that is, San Diego, or um, when's that officially taking place for your camp? Um, honestly, uh, I don't. I'm not even sure. I think in the next play by weeks, ear. I think, okay, so it'll just happen. Yeah, it's happening for sure. Like I've been invited for a while now. I think since the Jacobs fight. I was invited, but I just oh, had, terrific! Yeah, I met him out there, uh, Eddie, and just they are like, "When you, you like to get trained by Eddie Reynoso," and then that's how Oscar kicked off. Does that kind of feel like winning the lotto? Because that's like one of the coolest trainers, coolest crews. Ryan and Canelo are probably the two biggest stars in boxing, and they're like, "Hey, do you want to kick it with us? We're just like super popular and awesome." <laughs> um, honestly, I was just. Um, I was, um, it's like, it's an unexplainable feeling because um, I would always talk about things like that to my dad, like, what happens if this happens, this happens, and this is happening, and it's, it's, it's crazy to think about, but it's, it's um, you have to control your emotions, and you just got to show them and then train, and I understand they're just, they're just boxers chasing their dreams, and they got there because they work hard and a lot of sacrifices, and it's just great because... We know Ryan, we know his family, and they're just all like, it's a great, it's, it's going to be a great move. That's cool that you put it like that, because I think that's what a lot of people don't think of in life, is that it's hard work and dedication and sacrifice that creates a dream, and it's not just like people one day become a famous person that you no longer can talk to. But it was like the obsession with an idea that like got them to this place where a lot of people are entertained by what they do. Yes, it's um honestly just see it that way because they know Canelo and Ryan, they probably see me and they see, oh, I was once in his position working hard and trying to um become established star in the sport. And it's just it's just great because it's gonna be a great environment because they just see I'm a I'm a young and up and coming and they just they probably just wanna guide me and just guide me in the right direction and just uh, give me knowledge, and I'm really ready to soak that all up as a sponge. Yeah, I mean, are you, like, I know this is probably, like, a nerdy question, but yes. I know I'd be looking forward to that first Canelo selfie. Uh, I'd be like, okay, I'm taking that photo. I'm getting I'm getting the Canelo selfie. My gram's going to yeah. blow up. Yeah. Um, are you looking for that one? Um, honestly, I've been, uh, well, that I'm looking forward to everything, just working in the gym and just posting it. But honestly, um, just probably a picture with uh, Ryan and Canelo as well. Or just um, – no, I don't really don't take selfies like that, but um, just a picture you gotta of You got to take the Canelo yeah. selfie. Yeah, you got to take a Canelo and Ryan selfie because that's like two two uh, social media superstars that are bigger maybe than a, boxing. Maybe a video, yeah. Well, I mean, that's pretty cool. That's that's fantastic to hear that. Any boxing out there that's piqued your interest while I've got you on the line? Any, any fights out there that you're thinking – 
like, wow, this is good. What did you think of Earl Spence on, if you saw that fight? Um, I honestly thought it was a great fight. Uh, much respect to both of them. And um, I, just, I just think Twitter, everybody's divided on it. And honestly, bo- the boxing fans won that night because it was great for boxing. Sean Sport is a great sport. I'm just um, – I was, I was like, oh, did he get robbed? Like, but, like, I was honestly happy how Sean, rea- or Sean Porter reacted because if he's not upset about it, why should we be upset about it? And then the judges judged the fight how they judged it. But um, um, at the end of the day, the boxing fans won. And this just moves Spence in another power position because I just like to talk, like, about the, the business of the sport because he has two belts now, WBC, IBF. And then Terrence Crawford has the WBO, so they're just trying so now to... he's the he's got a better position to make that money. Yeah, so it's I think it's Spence Garcia, Spence beats Garcia, then Spence fights Pacquiao for the WBO, and then I mean the WBA, and then he has three bouts to the table, and then Terrence Crawford has one belt. So it's and it's kind of like they're gonna it's, that's what they were arguing like who's a bigger star, who's the A side, so. It's going to be interesting for the welterweight division, but I'm excited. But another thing I'm excited, I'm just excited for the Can- Canelo to fight um, Kovala. I know Canelo's going to do great, and I know Canelo's going to more than possibly stop him. And then Ryan as well. Ryan's going to, I know Ryan's going to shock a lot of people with his next I think people, like, people are really underestimating Ryan in that fight because I think Ryan's probably going to stop Duna. <laughs> Yeah, I, I believe so as well. Uh, I probably think like maybe five or six rounds since they want him to uh, get the feel because he hasn't fought for a while. But honestly, I'm just excited for. Um, I honestly watch like in for boxing. Um, I watch my like my friends as well, and then I also watch like the big stars, like Virgil Ortiz. Like I know Virgil Ortiz is gonna start making some noise as well. That's my boy. And it's I'm just honestly uh, happy just um, seeing people. That I know, just posturing, and it's just it's just crazy. I'm excited, but the probably the fights that interest me is probably the Andy Reese and Anthony Joshua, and then probably um, um, the the Tofimo Comley. Yeah, then, that's a that's a really interesting fight because that one I really don't know what's going to happen, and that rarely happens with me in boxing. Oh my God! I forgot to mention this one. Shakur and uh, Joe Gonzalez. That's a bad. Someone got mad at me yeah. on Twitter, which you can't really take Twitter too seriously because I said that's a mega fight, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, that's not a mega fight." And I said, "That's it a is. mega it fight, is. man. Joet's good." Yeah, I heard that. I heard that. Like, I um, it's gonna be a great fight. Um, I'm really close. Uh, I'm really like I'm really like closely watching that fight and just uh, honestly like. I'm excited because I know it's it's personal. It's really personal that fight, but I got my money on Shakur Stevenson. Shakur, I don't. My, my, yeah, my I don't know what how that fight's gonna look like. I like I don't know because I have a lot of respect for Joette. I just believe Shakur is one of these special fighters. I have seen Shakur in the ring with Terence Crawford and he holds his own. So that that speaks a lot about Shakur and Shakur. He has something that you can't teach. He has that, that, that competitive spirit, like it's it's out of this world. And he got to the he got he has accomplished all that in the amateurs. And he kinda carried him and Carlos Valderas, Nico Hernandez, they kinda and uh Clarissa Shields and like Michaela, they kinda carried but for the men's the men's side of the USA boxing, Shakur and like Carlos and uh, Nico, they kinda carried the sport when it was kinda like in a dark age in USA boxing when Oh hell we yeah! Didn't medal, when we didn't medal in 2012, it was kind of dark. It was a dark era for us, and Shakur was leading the pack, winning a silver medal, and that yep. kind of like set set us up for bigger and better things. Now you see uh, Keyshawn Davis prospering in uh, at the Warts and the Pan American, so it's it's great. But Shakur and um, I got my money on Shakur, and it just there's a lot of things that factor into that fight, which is like. And Reno with elevation, with a referee who could, who's a referee, and like if the referee wants to let him fight inside, and if he doesn't want to let him fight oh, inside, that's a, yeah, that's a really good call because Joette's style is you got to let the kid work. 
Yes, that's true. Um, and then if if Shakur if if he doesn't let him get off his punches and he's gonna get frustrated, so you, you just never know. And they're both undefeated fighters, so you never know like how they react. And this is boxing; one punch could change the fight. I just I feel like this is probably gonna be one of these fights where like you got the geniuses of the boxing world saying, "Oh, it's okay," and that's gonna be like a really good fight. It's so personal, and it's it's for a world title, and it's two prospects. It's just a really good fight. Yes, it's 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 great. It's a great fight, and I feel like this fight. When I seen it, when I seen rumors about it, and I seen it, and I was like, that fight's not happening. Like it's too young for. They're both too young, so they won't risk it. No, but I think Shakur wanted this fight to happen, and that's why this fight is happening. I thought the same exact thing. I thought the fight was too good to be made. I was like, yeah, that's too good of a fight to happen this early. We don't get those. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Shakur's 22. Uh, Joette's 25, I think. 24, 25. And it's just... I just looked into a lot of, like, things. Like, I've been watching this fight closely. Like, I looked up... I looked up Joette's height. I looked up his reach. Like, I'm like, this is a lot of things going to factor in because Joette's 5'6", with a reach of 70 inches. Shakur's five with a reach of like 70, 70 inches, I think, as well, 71. So, like, it's kind of that's going to factor in the southpaw. And then it's, it's a great fight. Yeah, it's an exciting fight. They're putting on some good shows. You, for fight fans, really, you don't lose because you can go um, see that fight. And then I think the week after, the week, the week following, you're going to be fighting in Oxnard. You can have yourself a, a little boxing week if you're a big fight fan and california because they're all that's a very uh affordable place to go to is reno yeah and oxnard yes it's, it's it's gonna be great and i'm excited because i'm training i know they're training and it's just gonna and then ain't nothing better than like say you're in training camp and you see a great fight that's gonna make you want to train harder do you like if you watch like the sports pe- porter fight because i've had this happen to me and i don't even train where i watch the fight and i get so pumped i go for a run yes have so, you ever had that yeah, happen yeah, yeah. I actually get like I actually done that a couple of times, and I honestly get like my best time runs, like in the best like PR, my personal best in those times, because I get excited. It's just it's crazy. Like it's something that you get pumped for. Because what was a fight? What's the last fight that you watched and then you broke a personal record because you were like that was a badass fight? Um, I don't remember that last fight, but I remember the probably like. One of the most memorable ones, like when I went to go see Terrence Crawford and uh, Victor Posto in person, and then I seen him win, and then I went back to the hotel. I was like 16, so I couldn't go out. I'm not. I was 16, so I went back. I went back to the, I think the MGM, and I went to go train like that night. It was like probably like midnight, and I went to go train. I went to run, and then I hit the mitts, and then I was telling my dad, and then it just. And then for the Canelo fight, the Canelo Jacobs, this last fight when they hopped. Yeah. We got, we, we, I got pumped for the weigh-ins. It's crazy because I went to go watch the weigh-ins and I got pumped for the weigh-ins. It's not even the fight. And I'm like, dad, let's go to the boxing gym. So I went to Fernando Vargas uh, boxing gym, got a workout in. So it's just like, I get pumped. Like it's something, it's something that it's unexplainable. I'm just, I get excited for these fights. I hear you because that's something that like, I feel when there's like a good fight, it's like you're like, "Ooh, this is a good one," but when it's like a bad one, you're like, eh, "I could stay home. I don't need to train." Yeah, I have I have I have watched a couple. Not even like sometimes I see like fights like on the like schedule. I'm like, "Nah, you can miss that one. Like it's all right. Like I won't go crazy." You can yeah. you can watch you can go on like an Instagram page and watch a short video on it or re- see who won and you can kind of picture how it went. That's how I felt that about that's how, that's how I thought about the Porter and Spence fight. But then I'm like, no, 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 like, like you gotta watch this one. I was like, Porter doesn't because I I was hearing stories from like um, Amado Vargas and Fernando Vargas Jr. that like we've been training with him, we've been training with him. Like he's he's not it's not gonna be easy for Spence. And yeah, Sean Porter's just a different guy, man. I tell that to everybody, but it's just he ceases to – he, he doesn't make it look good, but he makes it hard. Yeah, that's, that's – it's just crazy. It's good for the sport. Okay, well, I'll let you get to training, and hopefully I can come down before you go to Oxnard and watch you train. 
and all that stuff. I'm a big fan of your work, and I hope everybody that listens to this goes on and supports you when you probably need the most support of your career and the amateurs to help you out as you get ready to go for the Olympics. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate the, the platform, and, and just thank you. Of course. It's always a pleasure having you on, man.